education, knowledge, school. These words have been used interchangeably and constantly since I was a kid. Christian, you better make sure you get your education. Christian, knowledge is power. Christian, school is your ticket out of here. Christian, school ain't teaching you what you need for life. Christian, knowledge will never leave you. And at that stage in life, I didn't want to hear any of that from either side. I just wanted to sit in my room, play my game, and relax. A privilege not afforded to those speaking to me when they were my age. My grandma, for example, only got her high school diploma and had to work tiring hours in order to make sure that my mother and my uncle was provided for. My mom had a similar situation with my big brother. So to have the ability to go above and beyond a high school education was considered by them to be a landmark and an achievement. And I view it as such too. I mean, the fact that I'm going to become a first generation college student still boggles my mind. And it also comes full circle considering that I want to become an educator because I didn't really intend on becoming a teacher, but here we are. Anyways, being an educator is not only teaching the curriculum, as all of my teachers can attest to, it's also about making a difference in the lives of their students. Educators give time and energy in order to make sure that their students are doing well because they know that that wellness will lead to success in their future. I, I see this same desire in my family as well, in other families, a sign of the past wanting things to be better for the future. The elders wishing to see the little ones being better than them in every facet. After all, the elders and their elders have seen their right to education be stripped away. All the laws, punishment, and pushback from those in power led them to believe that being educated was the ultimate slap in the face to those who deterred them. To be educated was to be liberated. Liberated from the cage of conformity. True freedom from the trap of thinking that they're less than others. Because of them, we now have the ability to choose and no one can take that away from us. Thank you. You did a nice job, but you need this. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Jackson Metzbauer, and I'm a 12th grade student from Hereford High School. I ask you three simple questions. Did the great leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., simply sit back and allow for the oppression of African Americans to perpetuate in our nation? No. King masterfully delivered what is regarded as the most impactful and recognizable speeches in American history with his I Have a Dream speech. King spoke in the height of the civil rights movement, which directly undermined the oppression that he faced. Did former President Barack Obama wait for another to become the first African American president? No. Obama became the first black president to be elected in the United States in 2008. Did Madam C.J. Walker fail to act upon her desires of becoming a successful businesswoman? No. Walker followed her dreams of entrepreneurship through women's hair products and became the first African American woman to accumulate a net worth over $1 million despite being born into a family of sharecroppers. Her actions allowed countless others facing systemic issues in our nation to flourish. Madam C.J. Walker stated, don't sit down and wait for opportunities to come. Get up and make them. These three inspirational leaders created their own opportunities despite the blatant sociological disadvantages that are deeply rooted in American society. 
without these trailblazers taking charge and creating their own opportunities. Our world, as we know it, would be a desolate and toxic wasteland, lacking the opportunity for anyone, regardless of race, religion, or gender, to make their own opportunities and better our society. It is paramount that we draw inspiration from the aforementioned leaders and connect their willingness to take unprecedented initiatives into our own lives. Opportunities to create and inspire a thriving sense of change and long-lasting impact are only achievable if direct action is taken by the beholder of said opportunity. Changes stemming from opportunities that are created by an individual on their own can have implications on increased value of self and community. I have witnessed the advantageous impact that developing my own opportunities has had on myself and others. Last February, I attended what would become the first of many meetings at my school's Black Excellence Club. I can admit that I was hesitant to attend the meeting at first. However, I was confident that I wanted to create a positive impact in my school's environment in a world that often lacks empathy and understanding. As a result of attending that meeting, I realized the bright spot of hope and inspiration that I could provide in my school through the promotion of diversity, equity, and equality. I had the chance to become the club secretary later in the year, which I graciously accepted. This one decision to put myself out there and create my own opportunity led to a multifaceted array of benefits. It is imperative as a society that we create our own opportunities and follow in the footsteps of Madam C.J. Walker and other leaders who define themselves through the opportunities they created. So, take charge and see the difference you make. Hi, my name is Zaria Smithwick. I'm 15 years old and I am a sophomore attending Kenwood High School. And this is the name of a little girl who's always known exactly what she wanted and went for it. She's always been optimistic about the future and sure that things will work out for her. And if they didn't, she knew she had a plan to fall back on. As she got older, things changed, but her optimism was unwavering. No matter what obstacle fell in her path, she knew she would find a way around it. Anne was confident that everything would fall into place and that all her dreams would become a reality. I am Anne, Zaria Ann Smithwick. Ever since I was a child, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be an actress and a model, but I also wanted to be an activist. I wanted to be a nurse, a teacher, and a dancer, until I didn't. It all became too much to consider. I felt as if I wanted too many things out of life. I fell out of love with everything I once wanted, and around that same time, the optimism that once powered me ran out. I became scared of the future and of all the things I didn't know. All the possibilities in life terrified me, and I started thinking that anything that could go wrong would go wrong. My fear left me unwilling to try and make things happen, leaving me in a state of hopelessness that I was somewhat contemptuous of being in. To me, the quote, impossibilities are merely things of which we have not learned or which we do not wish to happen, tells the story of everyone. It tells the story of a world that's scared, Scared that they'll fail and that all the bumps they've hit throughout their journey would have been for nothing. Scared that the future they've been planning was simply something of their imagination. Someone once told me that fear has no power unless you give it power. As you grow, you will learn more about yourself and about all the things you want to be. You will develop many passions, all of which are worthy to be pursued. You will go through many things that will temporarily hinder your destiny. However, it is up to you to decide if you will allow it to permanently halt your future. Fear is strong. It's all-consuming. It can swallow you whole if you allow it. However, the passion you have for the things you desire in life is always stronger. 
and the name of a little girl who's grown up and in spite of all the rough patches in her journey has fallen in love with all the possibilities in life that once terrified her. Thank you. Hello, my name is Talika Huja and I'm a sophomore at George Washington Carver Center. The title of my speech is called The Wings of Life. There are two types of people in this world, literal and philosophical ones. Each has their distinct qualities, but the combination of two can create wonders. A quote written by George Washington Carver is, education is the key to unlocking the golden door of freedom. In society, school systems have put so much emphasis on attaining an education to be successful in life. Students are taught to get good grades, go to good colleges, and find stable jobs to support themselves. That can be seen as success from an objective standpoint. However, Carver brings up a new perspective. He describes how education isn't just about where you end up. It's about the journey that it takes you along and being able to unlock new abilities as you understand the real meaning of existence. The ability to grow from a tiny little seed to a tree filled with networks allows you the liberty to own your successes and your life. Freedom is based on your perspective of freedom and what it allows you to do in your life. A good education can help start one's journey, but it's up to the will of the person to finish that journey and accomplish as much as their heart desires. The foundations of learning create an eagerness to pursue one's interests and develop the skills which will help accomplish one's goals. Now literally, your life is based on what you do with it and how you use your knowledge and skills. Life is like a bird. You can either use your wings to fly or you can wait on the top of a tree in a warm, cozy nest while the other birds fetch your supper. Each choice has its potential, but ultimately, it's you who will carry out the courses of life while education is just a stepping stone to the impossible. One can imagine that education has no limits. In life, there are no impossibilities when one has the courage and resources. Learning is the same. There aren't boundaries, but adopting the right mindset can lead you to the freedom of eternity. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is, my name is James Abastiolo, and this is my speech titled, The Fight for Equitable Education. I want you to think back to the time you received your first house key, the unparalleled sense of independence and freedom it brought. Whether you were a teenager that could now go home whenever you pleased, or an adult renting your first house or apartment, you knew you had a safe place to call home. Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom as George Washington Carver so eloquently stated. For many black Americans, however, this has not always been the case. Historically, they have been denied access to education and the opportunities that come with it. For education to truly be a key, we must work towards, it must be accessible and equitable for all and allow everyone to unlock their full potential. Terms like equality, and equity are often used interchangeably. While equality gives everyone the same resources, equity recognizes that everyone has different circumstances and ensures everyone has the resources they need to succeed. In the 1960s, Carver's quote would have been a call for integration, as seen with Ruby Bridges, who became the first African-American student to integrate. Today, it means making schools more equitable. This includes providing counseling services, a support system of black authors and educators, and a curriculum that reflects the heritage and experiences of all students. These resources are crucial for students to be academically successful. Without them, the Jim Crow era of black students, like Bridges, faced immense challenges in their pursuit of education. These disparities are still very prevalent today, just 20 minutes apart. Howard County and Baltimore City have vastly different postgraduate statistics. According to the 2018 census, 60% of Howard County students went on to graduate college, 
while only 28.6% of Baltimore City students graduated college. Howard County students are not inherently smarter or harder working but they have bet access to better opportunities and higher performing schools, which provide students with a more well-rounded education. Meanwhile, Baltimore City schools are underfunded, have higher student to teacher ratios, and lack access to the resources needed for students to succeed. Baltimore City schools also have more metal detectors and law enforcement, which negatively impacts students' mental and emotional well-being perpetuating the idea that students are inherently dangerous and need to be policed. All of these create a hostile and criminalizing environment for students, especially students of color, making it harder for them to receive an equitable education. For education to truly be a key, we must work towards equity. To achieve this, we need to hire more black teachers, mandate black history and ethnic studies in the K-12 curriculum, and fund counselors, not school resource officers. Carver wanted everyone to have a key. Now, we live in a time where people have keys, but don't have houses or golden doors to walk through. We have to meet people where they are, not just hand out keys, but guarantee that every student, regardless of their background, has access to these doors. We must strive to create a world where everyone can access the golden door of freedom, where systemic barriers and discrimination cannot hinder them. Thank you.